Okay, what we're going to attempt to do here is make a 34 and a half thousandths brooch for making a socket head cap screw. Uh, see, here's one that uh, did last week. Got a piece of brass, and I don't know what the depth is. It's deep, deep enough to hold the Allen wrench. But anyway, what we what we did is to cut off the long part of the Allen wrench, and we got it mounted in the vise vertical, and got the maximum zoom on the microscope where I can get a good shot at the end and with a ball end mill dental cutter just a stock cutter I'm going in the center and, and hollowing it out in the shape of a ball so let's go to the Carl Rove whiteboard here a minute and let me show you, show you what we're doing. Okay, what we did, took an Allen wrench, cut it off. As I explained earlier, it was vertical in the vise and I went in with the, a dental bird, the smallest one I could find, and tried to stay as close to the center as I can. I tried, started hollowing out the center of that Allen wrench. Now, what we're going to do is go as deep as we can and maintain the center on your first cut with the ball end mill. What I'm ready to do now is take the cutter that we sharpened in the previous video, uh, you know, a couple of thousandths in tip width, and freehand, and again, I didn't mention it in the first video, but one of the characteristics of these, this style of cutter and the reason you could use them so efficiently in removing background on engraving, etc., is it has no ability to grab and take take off walking like a regular end mill. Uh, you've got really good control. So what I'm going to do is now that I've hollowed this thing out with a ball end mill, I'm going to go in here with the single lip cutter that we we made in the last video, or not single lip, but the uh, the pointed carbide cutter. It's not really a single lip cutter. But anyways, I'm going to go in here and in the red area, I'm going to remove and try to bring the maximum depth down to the same level in the, all of the red. So I'm just going to go in there and work my way around and being very careful when I get out to the edges of the wrench flats and not go outside. I want to keep a sharp, uh, crisp edge and hollow it out where the red is, is shown. And then what we'll do is we'll take that and take it over to the mill and, uh, and broach out a, a cutter with it. So it's, it's going to be hard to see anything, but what I'm going to be doing next, when I put the camera back on the, uh, the uh, microscope, is I'll be using the 2000s wide dental cu uh, cutter that we modified to machine out and mill out the red area. Okay, take out that ball end mill first.
got hot. Uh, okay. Kind of like going to the dentist's office. Let's take it out and see if it works. Now, one, one last operation before, before you test it out. What I like to do, two things really. First of all, get an Arkansas stone and lay down on and, and, and lightly swipe each flat just to make sure there's no burrs. If you, did, if you stayed inside the cutter, there shouldn't be. But I just like to just give it a light stone. And the next thing I'll do is go heat that to a cherry red and quench it. I believe this is 1075. So I, I usually quench it in all and uh, gives it a little bit more strength. So let's go, uh, let's go give her a try. We have a piece of uh, 84 thousandths brass in a collet. It has been faced off, and I've got a drill here where I sized it so it's 1 thousandth smaller than the flat to flat uh, clearance on the uh, Allen wrench that we're trying to, uh, to fit to this piece of brass. So what I'm going to do is go in here and uh, go in about 40 thousandths. So I've got my 40 thousandths uh, depth. So what we're going to do now is stick the, uh, the little brooch in there that I made. And I did heat treat it and harden it. And uh, this will be the first test for it, actually. So we got the brooch in there. Bring it right up to the... Uh, so it touches, lock the tail stock, and we got to lock the head stock as well, so it doesn't rotate. Okay, the head stock is locked. We got our hole pre-drilled. We got the brooch touching the. Uh, and what I'm just doing is working it in, back, in, and out until I get my depth. Now, at this point, I'm going to take the brooch out of the, of the uh, chuck, set it aside, And then I'm going to take a piece of non-broached hex stock that was, again, it was just a cut-off piece of uh, Allen wrench. I'm going to put it in the uh, chuck and just kind of as a cleaning operation. Yeah. I forgot to get my registration, so let me stop this for a minute. Okay, I have removed the brooch from the tailstock and installed it in this pen vise. And what I like to do at this point is, is remove the piece of stock, install it. Now this is a brooch now that I use and I install it into the broach hole and then kind of move it around lightly, try to go to each flat, pull it out, put it back in and just kind of wiggle it just a little bit. It cleans up anything and at this point, I usually do that twice, is the Allen wrench should fit right into that broach hole. Okay, so we've got a good brooch. You try to turn it, you can feel it's locked in, it's seated in the brooch hole, and we have a socket or brooch hole in the end of this shaft. Now at this point, I will size the OD of the, uh, the head that's been broached, then I'll turn it around and, and turn the... Uh, 
the rod down for the proper thickness for threading. And usually uh, this size of a screw, I go with a 0090. So if once you turn it down and uh, put a 0090 uh, die on there, I use these, these old style uh, acorn dies. These, they were made by uh, J.I. Barsh, I believe. I'll put the rod in the tailstock and let this guy float and then I, I can actually tap it, I'm sorry, thread it under power and then when it bottoms out or as you see it bottom out, you just turn loose of the, uh, the, the die holder and it'll just sit there and spin. So it's not that difficult to, uh, to make a custom made socket head cap screw. Now I failed to mention the reason that I needed these socket head cap screws at this scale and this size, here's a uh, defective casting of the uh, carriage. It was cast in white bronze. And uh, when this carriage is sitting on the, uh, the bed of the machine, the apron attaches to the... Uh, To the saddle there so the apron has to be bolted and there's actually eight bolts that come through the top of the uh, saddle down into the uh, apron eight socket head cap screws they were on the original machine they were 0.557 OD uh, it was a 5 sixteenths uh, broach socket head cap screw. So by scaling them down from 0.557 to the 1 12th, I ended up with a socket head cap screw between, you know, 55, 60 thousandths in that range. So if you put eight of those in there to hold that apron on there, they will be per scale. The thing that's always frustrated me about looking at the other people's military work, they'll say make a military saw uh, scale it down where the teeth should be, you know, point to point a certain thickness, and they'll go in there and put saw teeth in there that's uh, almost the same size it should fit on a regular saw. So you, when you're scaling stuff in a military, you have to keep not only your, your mechanical hardware as well as all your component scale. So by putting eight of these small socket head cap screws in there, and I'll probably make them out of... Uh, uh, 12L14 for the production run, but uh, this was just a setup to see if I could make a brooch out of an Allen wrench that the process uh, would apply for other brooches. The problem is uh, you're not going to get as clean a cut as you would with a rotating brooch, but uh, I feel like it is doable. The other option is if you needed a bunch of odd size socket head cap screws, you could, you could broach them and make them out of a, a synthetic material, Delrin, ABS, or anything like that, and, uh, and make them out of plastic, make a RTV mold, and cast them. So you got a couple of different options. But because of the size of this brooch and the fact that I, what really enabled me to make the brooch was the fact that I was using that little uh, pointed tool that we made in the last video and the, the amount of control for, for going in and digging out the, the depth that we needed to, to make the brooch but made it entirely possible. So with that, we're going to call it a wrap and uh, we're going to do one more video uh, on that uh, spring-loaded uh, drag engraver.